Ever since the 1990s, commuter rail routes have spurred all over the United States as part of a modern commuter rail renaissance. Most of these roads have similar rosters of variations of EMDs F-59s or MPIs MP Expresses and Bombardier bi-level coaches and cab cars. However, not all of these new commuter railroads follow the typical MPI and Bombardier norm, as one of them rosters GP40, which is shared between the local commuter and freight roads for yard work. As a new commuter railroad agency which thinks outside the box, Frontrunner rosters a single work locomotive which not only worked for a commuter rail service started at the beginning of the renaissance, but has also been rebuilt and used for various purposes throughout its history for freight, passenger, and switching. As class 1s were carrying more freight, locomotive builders increased their competition to outdo each other for efficient freight and mixed purpose locomotives, with two of the largest American locomotive builders at the time being General Electric, or GE, and Electromode Division, or EMD. With fierce competition intensifying between the two locomotive giants, EMD continued its second generation series of diesels in 1965 with the GP40, GP standing for general purpose, and 40 standing for model 40. Even though it had a nearly identical appearance to the last two locomotives EMD built two years prior, the GP35 and the GP28, the GP40 had a 55 foot frame, an EMD 645E3 prime mover, and three radiator fans, which made it stand out among the 52-foot framed 567D3A engine and two radiator fan predecessors. These differences also gave the GP40 an increase of 500 horsepower from 2500 to 3000, thus making the locomotive stronger and more reliable with its already versatile four-axle and somewhat short design. As an expanding Southern Class 1 in pursuit of reliable diesels to haul coal and other freight, the Louisville and Nashville ordered a total of 30 GP40s number 3000 to 3029, with the locomotive to be focused on being 3025, built in September 1967. Here they worked with other relatively new EMD Jeeps and SD40s along with GE U-boats as they helped haul an increase in traffic as the LNN acquired smaller railroads in the Chicago region, such as the Monon route and the Chicago and Eastern Illinois. A few years before these acquisitions, the LNM was bought by the Family Line system in 1971, thus sharing common ownership while operating under different names when conducting business. Even though each railroad retained its own identity, they operated in the official family line system, which was based on the Louisville and Nashville's existing gray and yellow livery, with the addition of a red stripe below. Even with this absorption into a holding company, 3025 still retained its original l and livery until 1982 when the railroads under the family line systems were combined into the seaboard system. With this official consolidation, 3025 was renumbered to 6821 and had its LNN lettering patched over. Yet this would not be the last time that the locomotive would be transferred to another road, it's only four years after the seaboard system was formed. It was merged with the Chessie system to form the Chessie Seaboard Merger, or CSX, in 1986, and 6821 was repainted into the railroad's somewhat LNN-inspired gray and blue livery. Meanwhile, the state of Virginia was in the process of finalizing the necessary components of the former commuter railroad from the northern Virginia region to the nation's capital. With more talk of starting commuter rail service in large cities around the nation, and with the success of Tri-Rail in Miami and Metro Lincoln in Los Angeles, many of these proposals were approved for new opportunities of commuter travel in growing cities. However, the proposed commuter railroad needed a fleet of locomotives and rolling stock that would provide reliable service for the commuter line. So the commuter agency purchased 10 CSX GP40s, including 6821, along with 38 single-level Mafursa coaches and 21 rebuilt RDCs from MBTA. The GP40s were built by Morrison Knudsen at their Mountaintop Pennsylvania facility for passenger service specifications in August 1991 for $6 million, as they were given head and power, had their 16-cylinder engines exchanged for a 12-cylinder engine, had their horsepower degraded from 3,000 to 2,300, and were numbered V01 to V10, with 6821 being renumbered to V07. They were reclassified as RP39-2C, with RP standing for road passenger, and the dash 2 meaning that the locomotive was rebuilt to the common EMD-2 standards for most of their switchers, as the 10 locomotives chosen were previously never rebuilt to dash 2 standards. With a fleet of rebuilt Jeeps, RDCs, and Mafursa coaches, Virginia Railway Express commenced operations on June 22, 1992, between Washington, D.C. and Manass, Virginia, and the roster continued to grow with Pullman bi-level coaches and more rebuilt GP40s leading frequent service from Northern Virginia to Washington, D.C. However, 
The reign of the former freight locomotives on the commuter rail would not last forever, as VRE purchased new MPI MP36BH commuter locomotives in 2010, which already had years of success on various new and existing commuter railroads across the US. As these new locomotives entered service, the RP39s, the oldest locomotives in the railroad's fleet, were the first ones to be retired, the rest of VRE's locomotive fleet being retired shortly thereafter. Luckily, the 10 RP39s were quickly purchased only a year later by Motive Power Industries, or MPI, ironically the same company that produced the MP36 replacements, where they were stored and given MPEX stencils and their Vs replaced with ones until they were scattered among numerous short lines around the US and Canada. At the same time, the Utah Transit Authority's relatively new frontrunner was about to complete their expansion south from Salt Lake City to Provo, Utah, commonly referred to as Frontrunner South. In order to store more train sets for the new route, UTA had to expand their storage and maintenance facility onto neighboring Union Pacific territory, specifically in the 400 South Yard. Union Pacific decided to split the yard with UTA and told the commuter railroad that they needed two locomotives to switch in the yard, and that UTA had to pay a lease on the second locomotive to switch on their half of the yard. In order to prevent paying a lease for an existing UP switcher, UTA decided to search elsewhere for a versatile work locomotive for their yard, and that's when they found the V07, one of the last remaining RP39s to still be owned by MPI. The locomotive was brought to UTA property in December 2013, read number 901, partially converted into a remote control switch engine, and was given a mainly white livery with blue railing and the UTA logo, thus giving it the appropriate nickname Snowflake. 901 is also shared between the UTA for switching moves as, and as a protect engine, and the Union Pacific for shunting freight cars for the facilities on front runner's side of the yard, while utilizing Union Pacific's crew. Although, on one occasion, Snowflake was removed from service on January 30th, 2016 due to freeze damage to its main diesel engine after being left on a siding after a harsh winter with an uncertain future, but it was later repaired and continues to work in the Salt Lake City region to this day. Throughout its 50 plus year service life, this Jeep has proved itself worthy of any task it was given for the five roads it worked for, whether that task was hauling coal trains through the Southland, transporting passengers from the developing towns of Virginia to the nation's capital, or shunting for a new commuter road and a Class 1 in one of America's largest growing cities. Thank you all for watching this episode of Remarkable Engines. This locomotive truly had an eventful career working for Class 1s and commuter railroads alike in different parts of the nation. Its individuality eventually became more evident as it went from one of 30 original or unrebuilt GP40s from the Louisville and Nashville one of the ten of the original fleet for new commuter rail service, and finally, the only diesel that wasn't a passenger locomotive on the modern western commuter rail route, which is shared between passenger and freight railroads. As this series focuses on locomotives that are the only one of their kind or seemingly common locomotives becoming unique in their own ways, the ongoing development of 901 and its unique identity among the common locomotive type makes its story highly remarkable. Thank you again for watching and stay tuned next time when I cover the world's only 4144. Soviet Locomotive Class AA20. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Have a good day.